Hello and welcome to the Climbing Daily Friday Gear Show. Today's show is an unboxing feast. I get to show you guys my favourite three things that have come through the door in the last month and announce the winner of last week's competition. Now the problem with unboxing climbing gear is a lot of it doesn't come in a box. So as per usual, I've shoved it in a box. So, first up is this Kong Prog. Now the idea behind this is similar to the Kong Panic. So let's say you're on a sport route, you're scared, you're pumped, and you can't reach up to clip the bolt above your head. This is where the prog comes in. The wishbone area here, or the dog bone, is uh, semi-rigid and flexible, which means you can reach it up to clip into that bolt above your head. This comes, this is the 45 centimeter version, but there's also a 30 centimeter version, so a little bit smaller and less sort of bulky on your harness. What's really interesting about the prog is this connector system here. Now this acts a little bit like a locking carabiner. Let me show you. Once opened, the prog connector will stay open until it comes in contact with a bolt. This then closes the connector, locking the prog onto the bolt. A lot like one of those screw gate or magnetic gate locking carabiners. Once it's attached into the bolt, you can simply attach your rope to a quick draw attached to the bottom. Quick draw sold separately. Now the Prog has a few advantages over the Kong Panic. One of them being that because of the way this locking system locks, it gives you a few centimeters extra of height when reaching up to that bolt. The second thing is that because it acts as a locking carabiner, you could use this as part of an anchor system. So you could attach the Prog onto one bolt, attach a quick draw onto another bolt, equalize the bottom and clip into it, let's say at the top of a sport route. Because it's locking, it also gives you a little bit extra peace of mind when swinging around on it. Now this is, I'll be honest, a really specific piece of gear that isn't going to appeal to everyone. But people seem to love the geekiness of the Kong Panic, and this takes geekiness to a whole new level. Which is exactly what the gear show is about, really. So if you're interested, 45cm version or 30cm version, I'll put the links below. Okay, next up is a new backpack from Xped. Now Exped, well I know Exped from making really high quality camping mats and camping equipment, especially those uh, really lightweight ones. So I've got high expectations about their backpack. Now all backpacks are absolutely rubbish without anything in them, so that's better, filled with stuff. Okay, so some features of this pack. It's lightweight at only 670 grams and features nylon 420D ripstock fabric. Ripstop fabric, sorry. Uh, so it shrugs off rock abrasions and scuffs. It's also completely waterproof. And what I really like is it has one of those roll top designs that then you then secure on the side. I've used this system before and personally, I think it's the best way to ensure your kit inside the bag stays dry. Let's have a look at the back. So this pack is designed to be pretty minimal, but still comfortable. So it's got a thin layer of quite sturdy foam in the back, which is uh, sort of comfortable, but not enough to push the backpack away from your back. There's contoured straps here, which stay out of the way when climbing, and a removable hip belt, and a sternum belt that can be moved up and down. On the front, we have this pocket, which is great for putting your sort of maps and things into it. A daisy chain system down the front so you can attach extra bits of gear with carabiners. So I tend to hang my harness off the back of it when I'm not wearing it. It's got these extendable uh, straps for your ice axes. So you don't just have to put ice axes, you can put other tools or those really bulky axes in here and it will accommodate all different types. It's also got ski straps so you can strap your skis to it which make this a perfect ski mountaineering or ski touring backpack. Now one of the features I found out when I was researching this that I absolutely love is the fact that the inside has this sort of fluorescent white effect in it. Now the reason they've done that is so when you've packed your pack full of stuff and you're looking into the depths of it, if you have a dark fabric, you can't see it very well. With a white fabric, it reflects it back up and you can see easily, which is great in low light or if you're wearing a head torch. Such a cool little idea, but one that I've sort of never really thought of really. So Exped, fantastic little design with this. Now I haven't used this out in the mountains, so as always, I'd love you guys' input on this. Is this pack any good? Have you used it? Oh, and this is the 30 litre one. So is it big enough for your needs when alpine climbing or have you used it for multi-day missions as well? Let me know. Okay, 
Finally, a red chili warm up set thing. So this is the red chili heat up set. Now, as I said, I've talked about this, but this is the first time I've sort of held it. This is a great little all in one kit for warming up at, at the crag. Let me show you what's inside. So we start off with a skipping rope. This is to get the big muscles moving and the blood throwing throughout your body before you move on to the isolating exercises. Isolation exercises, I mean. So you get this rubber ring, which is great for grip, uh, warming up, sort of the forearm muscles. You have a band, like a Dynaband thing, uh, which I find fantastic for your shoulder muscles, your back muscles, or your biceps. And then finally, we've got this little rubber ball, which you can put on your back or somewhere else <laughs> that needs a massage, lean against the wall and use that to work out those kinks, either before or after a session. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I am rubbish generally about warming up, which I should be better at considering how many injuries I've had recently. What's cool about this is everything is in one place. So if I were you, I'd shove it in my car, and then whenever you go to the crag or the climbing wall, it's just accessible and there for you. So it takes away that excuse of not warming up. What do you guys think? Would you use this? Have you used this? Is it any good? Please let me know by commenting below. Okay, now, we launched a competition last week, and it's time to tell you guys the winner. So last week, we launched a competition to win this Edelred helmet. Now what we asked you guys to do is comment below and let us know what type of gear show you wanted us to make next. That's because this show is as much your show as it is our show. We make it for you guys so you can learn different things and show you different gear. Now we had some amazing responses, hundreds and hundreds. I read them all through, made a big list of what you guys want to see, but I had to pick a winner. So I decided on Quentin Len, who had the great idea of picking one guy who had a lot of gear and another guy who had a lot of gear and comparing the two racks. They could then discuss about what's good and what's bad in their rack and kind of come up with a perfect solution. What's cool about this idea is we can compare pro racks together or pro racks versus Epic TV staff member racks or just you guys climbing racks. The possibilities are endless, which is why I like this. Well on Quentin Lee, Helmet will be winging its way towards you soon. And on that note, guys, that is all we've got time for today. Make sure you're leaving comments below and please subscribe to our channel because we have cool stuff like this every single day. Thanks for watching. See you soon.